Hey guys, welcome back, it's Biggs. Today, something that's been coming for a long time. Now this particular one that we're gonna unbox today, it just arrived at the post office. Been waiting on this one for a long time. Honestly, me and Paisley have been looking for this particular one now for over a year and a half. And it just, every single time we think we have it within our grasp, it just doesn't work out. So finally, a, a dear friend, finally was able to come through and we've got some today. Now I really wish that Pacey were here with me to do the unboxing, but uh, just because how long it's taken and the transit and all that sort of stuff, I really wanna just do the unboxing quickly and then I'll show Paisley later. But I would rather that she were here with me to do it with me because she's just so excited about it. But let's get to it, let's see what's in here. Now, just in the past few weeks, we were, I was involved, I was very, very fortunate with a lot of dear friends to be involved with a, an import of isopods directly from Thailand. And uh, I ordered a couple of species, the pricing was exceptional. Now, uh, the problem that most people wouldn't know, like I'm in Canada and most Americans, which is the large portion of my base and my following, wouldn't really or understand is the, the, the diversity of species that we have here in Canada for Persilio is top notch. The diversity we have for Armadillidium, top notch. Armadillo, same thing, we've got it, where everything's good. Where we really, really lack here in Canada is Kubara species. So even the ones that may be very common down south, they're just not readily available whatsoever in Canada. So this order from Thailand was about to rectify that. Uh, I ordered a couple of species, and honestly, out of all the species, only one made it. Uh, it was kind of a, a disastrous shipment, no fault whatsoever on anybody's part. The shipper did a great job. The gentleman who organized everything did an exceptional job. His communication was top notch. Everything was covered, so like all in all, it was an absolute win. I know it was a lot of work for him. I greatly appreciate the amount of effort that the gentleman put into it. But uh, I, I ended up with one species, and one species that I was absolutely coveting since we kind of started into this venture, and we'll show that one up in a bit. And then I also was able to pick up one, I picked them up, because I went into together with getting that species with my good friends Ivan and Cheyenne over at Species Canada, uh, and uh, they had a species put aside for me there as well that I'd never gotten before, and that's fl uh, Priscilio flavo marginatus. I'd never really had that species. They've always had it available, but it's one that I, I just had never ever picked up. So they sent me home with a, a culture of those. I'll give you some shots of that. It's a really, really cool uh, species of Priscilio. It kind of looks like a cross between uh, kind of expanses, Hoffman Sagai. It's got that beautiful classic black and bright, bright white coloration. It's a stunning, stunning species. Likes it a little bit drier in regards to its culture, but if you can do Hassii, Ornatus, Hoffman Sagai, Magnificus. If you can do any of those type of Spanish Priscilios, where they like it a little bit more arid, a little bit more dry, uh, then you'll have no problem keeping Flavo Marginatus. It's also it's gonna be a big, about the same type of conditions. It does like a higher protein diet. It does like a little bit. So we often use fish flakes and we use dried minnows. So, you know, those are excellent, excellent food sources. They also do relish eating a lot of the different gel diets. I'm very, very fond of uh, a couple of the different ones from Rapashi. So you'll notice that the venting is here. The venting is also channeled through exactly on the same spot on the opposite side. So I do get a nice cross breeze growing through. And I do have ventilation on the one end. The reason being for that is for this particular type of a species, which requires slightly higher humidity. But this way here, I've, I've controlled it. Oh, the thing that you always got to bear in mind is no one person can tell you how much humidity your animal is going to need. Nobody can tell you how much to water. Nobody can tell you how much ventilation to add. You're going to have to adapt to that, to your animals in your conditions within your home. But for me, I think this is going to work really, really well. So I've got the different pieces of cork bark, oak bark, some leaf litter. And then I also have a nice loamy mixture that's a mixture of charcoal, fir bark, sphagnum moss. I'm also using a product called Sea Soil, which is a, uh, a, a, a pure organic, um, like a black earth type product, but it's made with products from the ocean, like uh, different types of invertebrates and stuff from the ocean and stuff. So it adds a lot of different mineral content back. I'm using some different live mosses. I'm using some different lichens. And then here's my real moisture area over here is this nice big bed of long fibered sphagnum moss. Now the other thing you'll notice is I'm actually using several pieces of a, a softer limestone. It's actually sold in the aquarium trade 
as Texas Holy Rock. And what I do is I have, I have a very, I'm very fortunate, I have a nice big fish wholesaler, tropical fish wholesaler, local to me, and he sells uh, Texas Holy Rock. So what I do is I go into the very bottom of the bin and I find all the little broken shards and stuff, and then I bring that stuff home, and that's what I use. It's a little bit softer than just finding a natural piece of limestone here. The limestone that is local to here is very prevalent, it's most of our bedrock, but the limestone that's here is extremely dense. This stuff here, water channels through it and bores holes through it and stuff, so it'll be a bit more readily accessible for the animals to access the, 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 the mineral content or the calcium out of that rock. Then I also go and throw in several pieces of cuddle bone, and then to even add more calcium to it, I also can add eggshells, because we got lots of chickens, we got lots of eggshells, I can bake those, clean them up, dry them up, crush them down, and throw them into the mixes of all the isopods. But I also, this one, I do that, but I also use calcium carbonate, which is a substrate that is sold for the reptile trade. Uh, it's basically to provide a, pr a pure calcium source for reptiles should they ingest it. It looks like sand, but it's a true calcium source. And I actually sprinkle that fairly liberally through in the mix as well. So I bet you guys are kind of wondering, hey, Biggs, stop talking about muds and stuff. Show us what you got. My daughter Paisley is absolutely going to lose her mind when she comes home tonight. I didn't want to tell her in advance because I was terrified that if they didn't make it. Transporting stuff up here in Canada is a bit challenging. So as you'll notice on this package, this package was shipped priority. This package was shipped on priority and it left on Monday and today is now Friday. So I paid extra for an overnight service that still took an entire week to get here from three provinces over. So very, very well packaged. Some bubble wrap, some paper towel. The whole thing is nicely insulated with bubble wrap all the way around. And here we have it. A nice container. So hopefully they're okay. Let's take a look. There's one little guy moving around there right on the top. the highly coveted rubber duckies. Now, we've only ever had one species of Cubaris in our collection, and that's the red skirts, or red edge. And they've done very well for, for us. We've never kept the marina, even though they're readily available. But ever since my daughter caught her eye of these little ones called rubber duckies, and at one quick glance, you can easily see how they got the moniker. Very, very endearing, coveted by many. Now in Canada, most Kubara species are not readily available. We've got Persilios and Armadillidiums, no problem. But the Kubaras have so far been somewhat challenging to get. So our search for the rubber duckies has finally, finally brought them home. We have 17 of them. They're exploring. Now, from a Kubara standpoint, rubber duckies, everybody gets so endeared by seeing the beautiful pictures of them and stuff online. And they are fascinating, fascinating creatures, don't get me wrong. But as a Kubara species, they tend to spend a lot of their time buried. Now, we did get one other species. Not at this time, but with that order. That one is another highly coveted species that we've been waiting on for a long time. We finally have them in our collection today. So let's let these little ducklings settle in after their long flight here. We'll check back on them in a week or two. Let's go take a look at the other species, the other super coveted species that we are so excited to get. These ones here, the highly coveted Kubaris Lemon Blue. These ones came in in excellent shape, as did the duckies. And I, I you know, as sad as it may say, I really enjoy these, honestly, even more than the rubber duckies because I can lift up that little piece of mossy lichen and they are, more than half of them will always be underneath it every single time.
All isopods intrigue me. They have such fascinating behaviors. Incredible diversities of colors and shapes. Now, Kubaris, like their relatives Armadillidium, can roll up into a tight little ball. Now, Kubaris in general tend to be a little bit more finicky or challenging to establish a culture. But once established and you've figured out their parameters, they're pretty straightforward. Most, if not all, Kubara species are Asian in origin, and a lot of them inhabit limestone caves, limestone being extremely calciferous. So the addition of more, more calcium and more aspects of calcium or limestone within the enclosure is very, very important to their care. They also tend to like it a little bit warmer than most of the other species and higher humidity, definitely more humidity than any of the porcilios. But if you're willing to play with them, they're outstanding, amazing isopods. And we are truly blessed to have them in our collection. So as always, my friends, thank you so kindly for watching, sharing, supporting the mad aquarist or the mad isopodist. We're all the same. Until next time, 